so today is a fun tasting because you uh, you sent a couple of uh, older vintages, 2002 mm -hmm. and 2007, which is fun also because let's say these were more challenging vintages, particularly 2002. At the same time, it's it's fun to taste some wines that are showing maturity, tertiary character. I haven't had them in a while, so it's uh, great to taste that with you. Um, which vintage do you want to start with? We'll probably start with the uh, 2007. Give me again the uh, background you're on, on seven. It's actually a way of just comparing 2002 and 2007. They're quite similar as they both started uh, with a well, hot spring. But uh, 2007 was actually suddenly cut, but very, very cold and rainy summer. So both July and August were actually just pretty, um, pretty well, sad. So it was cold, rainy, but then everything was just healed up by uh, a very warm uh, September, month of September, which enabled all the grapes to finally ripen perfectly until the end. It was, if we compare as a matter of global temperature, 2007 and 2002 are quite alike. Uh, there was slightly more rain in 2007. As I remember, like I haven't tasted this yet. I just smelled it, stuck my nose in it. But I remember the sevens, when they were young, they had some quite firm tannins. Mm. And uh, what I've tasted or drunk recently, uh, the wines have really started to soften and they're very attractive now. And this one right away shows some classic uh, mature Bordeaux aromas like tobacco and um, tea and, you know, it's really, and the soubois, the, the um, wet earth and um, forest floor aromas. Both of them were not released on the market massively. We just could answer if you, if you demand for it. But 2002 particularly was... Uh, there's, there's, there's the story of this one was not released on Primeur, but 2007 as well was not a vintage that was not clearly looked for. Um, but at the same time, now, both of them just fit in what we call the kind of intermediate uh, vintages. So those ones that are not clearly considered as the glorious ones, but do drink perfectly well now and do offer a great value for money and pleasure. It really is. It's, it, it still has plenty of fresh fruit like black currants and things, mm -hmm. but then you have at the same time uh, that sort, like I said, the what you can say, the tobaccos, dried tobacco, bark. It's really starting to move in that direction. 2007, this one offered just smooth, as you said, this kind of sicker box and a really perfectly bright fruit, no perizine at all. It's just everything is just. Smooth. It doesn't have the potential of an uh, of an a nine, of an a ten, but it's really smooth, well balanced, and ripe at the same time. You're right. It really has the tobacco box rather mm. than just tobacco. A no cohiba box, yeah. Yeah, right. I, I was <laughs> going to say cigar box. Okay, let's try the um, the two. Oh, two was mm. again a, a more difficult vintage, but also. It was reasonably priced when it came out. And then when it was when it was actually released, well, that was one among the rare two vintages that uh, Jean Hubert Delon decided not to release on Primeur. So 2002 wow. was one of a kind once again. And so it is in a way comparable to 2007, although it may appear somehow quite stricter. Um, there's uh, it's more acidic. It's actually fresher. The blend one actually more would be more complex because if you consider that in 07, there would be, well, the usual, well, quite classic 82 Cabernet Sauvignon, 8 Merlot, and four and 10 Cabernet Franc. Okay. In the 2002, we still had 5% of Petit Verdot. And that really accounts, indeed, when you taste it. The tannins are a little bit more um, austere here than the yeah. 7, but at the same time, I like the uh, freshness to the wine the firmness, and again, the tobacco box, mm -hmm. currant, cedar, mushroom. Those are very much brother-like vintages. Yeah. And as you know, you've tasted many vintages of Le Villascaz. Some may be kind of overpowering the Saint-Julien style, 
Um, and so actually turning some towards something that would be rather looking like a Poyak style. But both of these ones would be typically Saint Julien, typically Levin Lascaux. It's a real treat to taste them. And, you know, I hope in the end you do, because I can tell you that uh, even here, uh, tasting with people, they, they really appreciate the opportunity to drink uh, some aged Bordeaux, particularly straight from the chateau mm. where it's been stored perfectly. Well, thanks to share the old wines. It's always a pleasure. Okay. A bientôt, merci.